Good evening, YouTubers. Anyone who knows me and who knows from my vlogs knows that I have no love lost for Gail Dines. I consider her to be nothing more than an anti-sex, faux-feminist, faux-leftist, prudish, sanctimonious, no account, no account. Well, let's just say that they, that she is basically, I think, key to what progressivism, what David Duke is to race relations. And and this one, and this article that she praises for counterpunch that she poked, that was posted on July the tenth, she just shows just how much of a sexist idiot she is when it in the subject comes to pornography and feminism. And he also shows her meanness in how she treats people who simply you know, disagree with her, and how she bullies people who who don't necessarily march in perfect good step with her any porn whackery. The title of this one will be called, as you can see, When a Feminist Gets Bumped for a Pornographer, and it basically involves uh, two segments of a show on MSNBC called the Melissa Harris Perry Show that were dedicated to porn and to basically how porn was dealing with the recession and the relationship of pornography to the basic political and social war against women basically being drawn off by the GOP and the various conservatives. It, it, the, the original segment touched upon everything from the Rush Limbaugh, Sandra Fluke, Vohaha, you know, the one where Rush went ahead and called Sandra Fluke a slut because she wanted to have her insurance policy cover her birth control. Then it went into the phenomenon of feminist porn and the fact that porn was not making it too well like everything else in the economy due to the recession and how the realm of how the subgenres of feminist porn was were actually selling pretty well and was trying to do as an alternative to the traditional male center of porn that was not doing so well, supposedly. Well, as anyone knows, Gail Nine is not fond of porn at all. Not even the feminist type. To her, porn is simply nothing more than the ultimate portrayal of rape and degradation and brutalization of women, and it's also the centerpiece of the evil capitalist strategy against women in general. Well, against workers. Well, not that Gail actually gives a rat's ass about workers, or for that matter, about men in general, or even about working class women. They're just crutches for her anti porn views. But anyway, this is the article that she wrote after she was kind of stoned from MSNBC when they originally sent went to her to solicit her comments for their program, which she often assumed that that would be an invite for her to go on the program and spout any porn spills. But then they effectively refused it and went and out and invited a few other people, including giving people like Kristen Tarmino and Michael Dyson to, to the ultimate show, the ultimate program, and that was basically what set Gail off so much that she decided to write this little piece of nonsense. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and scroll down and I'm going to read it to you and as I read it, I'm going to comment on it. And if you don't mind, I'm going to go ahead and use my little rap film. It's a poor imitation of Gail, but I guess because this to tell you how foolish she is. Uh, here we go. This is the, the, the title is called When a Feminist Gets Bumped by a Pornographer. <coughs> Excuse me, I gotta get into the voices. Last week, midway through at least early Saturday afternoon, I got an email from Melissa BC asking me to be on the Melissa Harry Ferry Show a week later, July the 7th. I was delighted to accept, as MSP is not your usual American choice. A professor of political science at Tulane University, she is an outspoken African American feminist and a progressive voice in the media landscape dominated by a right wing talking head. MSNBC is a rare media oasis in the U.S. where one gets to hear some actual critical analysis. So I, mistakenly as it turned out, 
Don't they think we're going to be going to view part of it? Working with corporate control media. In reality, after many years of being on talk shows in the U.S., I have come to affect very little in terms of integrity for the media. Their job is to boost ratings by making stories entertaining and light, and God help anyone who gets in their way. You know that the quote that Dines starts off with the tribute, because, of course, Dines is basically assuming that that because Melissa Harris Perry is a progressive and MSNBC is a liberal network, that she's going to have automatic and total access to spew her any pornography ideals. And yes, of course, later on when she persuaded otherwise, her view of Melissa Harris Perry and MSNBC and the film changes quite rapidly and quite quickly. But that's for later. Let me scroll down here and continue. All right, here I'm here. Continuing on with Gail. I've been a long time on the phone with MSNBC. Excuse me. Excuse me. I've been a long time on the phone with MHP producer talking about my research on the whole of the porn and the way that pe women in the industry, especially women of color, are medically exploited and physically and remotely dehumanized and defaced. Given MHP feminist politics and her scholarly work on the rep representation of African American women in U.S. history, I was excited to do a show with an interviewer who I expected to be entertaining and thoughtful. It got back to the usual adolescent sniggering I get from the male jurors who suddenly find this over the awkward position of interviewing a feminist who doesn't think that point is fun. Translation here, gang. See, with Gail, if you don't agree completely and totally with what she says about porn and you're a man, then you're just an adolescent who simply whacks off 50 times a day to porn. And if you're a woman that disagrees with her, then you're either a cum dumpster, a patio of porn, or just plain stupid. Of course, that doesn't prevent her from aligning herself with right-wing women who oppose porn and who also have to be hardcore right-wingers. But again, that's another story. But let's continue on. But I went out the way things started to go very wrong. My last conversation with the producer was on the Sunday before the show, and I was told that I would get a call on Tuesday to confirm my travel details. Wendy came and no call. On Thursday, I got an email saying that the segment is changing. And segment is changing is in quotes here, of course. So they won't not, so they won't need me. Changing, not canceled. The other industry seems like splitting hairs, but I am an old head at the three year, and I've been in this position more times than I can count. Yeah, an old hand of dealing with Mia. Of course, she had no problem in getting in her Australian tour last year, getting on all over the pro TV programs, talking all sorts of smack about the evils of porn. But see, this, you know, here she can complain, the thought complain about censorship and ideas, and it's from a woman who had no problem in promoting censorship. It's <laughs> continuing on. Let me explain how it often plays out. I get a call from a producer to do a show about porn, and in our pre show discussion, the producer is shocked to hear what really goes on in the porn industry. He or she had no idea that hardcore porn, called guns over the industry and fans, is not made through the internet, and that talking with a penis, slapping, hair pulling, and vocal use of the norm. The producer is horrified to hear that women in porn suffer clearly for rectal prolapse. Excuse me, quick while I scroll. All right, continue on. Okay, let me repeat that last sentence. The producer is horrified to hear that women in porn to clearly for rectal. Excuse me. No, I'm sorry. This is too because I'm laughing because the following paragraph is just too damn funny and too damn obsessive. But let me try to go on. I'll just do it in my normal voice. The producer is horrified to hear that women in porn suffer repeatedly from rectal prolapse because of pounding anal sex and get diseases such as chlamydia of the eye, gonorrhea of the throat, and fecal throat infections because of the ATM magnet with the penis goes into the anus to the mouth without washing. Now, let me break here and remember this. First of all, of course, she misspelled chlamydia. And she spelled it C L A M I D I A, and everybody who knows what actually understand and S T I know that chlamydia spelled, I think, what? C 
C-H-L-T-H-L-Y-M-I-D-I-A. Is that it? Chlamydia? Chlamydia? But you would think that someone who has studied porn for the last, like, 10 years and would understand the idea of STI would be able to spell chlamydia correctly. But this is the thing. Apparently, now, this isn't to say that there aren't it's that you like rectal from anal prolapses don't occur years, or that there and there have been cases of women who have have gotten infect stone infections before, but they're few and far between, and they're hardly the issue anymore. And as for ATM, ATM, which is basically ass to mouth, somebody really should remind Gail that most professional porn performers actually. Oh, well, oh, what what ATM is, and they actually do what we prepare hygienically, people with enemas and other things to prepare themselves for the act of ATM before they perform. Of course, she, of course, Gail and her infinite wisdom and her evil wouldn't well, actually actually bother to ask performers what they do to prepare for such act like anal or oral sex or ATMs. But then again, that would require actually respecting her opinion. And of course, we all know Gail is surely not capable of that. Oh, hell no. But let's continue on. Okay. Going back to the Gail voice. As we talk, I know exactly what's going on in the producer's mind. They see their one hot, rainy, driven segment going down the tubes. And there are some people that are not to run territory of cruelty, violence, and economic exploitation. Of course, because you see, uh, because you see, I guess according to Gail, the only, only documentaries or the only media documentaries on porn that actually get ratings or the fun feminist type that glorifies people. Has she ever watched Fox News? Has she ever actually seen the Meat Commission? And, I mean, that's the fact that almost every major media portrayal of porn is negative and mostly promotes the vision of that very vision of women, the new women being trapped by trench coat wearing slashers into dark dungeons and being forced into horrible, just cruel, degrading sex acts. Where this fun feminism is, uh, I really don't know, but it must be in her, her mind, maybe, or her rhetoric. Anyway, let's continue on. As this is word enough, that when we get to the other end of the line, use the other word capitalism. Because, of course, there is no way to talk about the porn industry without the sense of how this predatory industry has really interfaced with chemical companies, banks, information technology, hotels, venture capitalists, and, wait for it, I'm sorry, wait for it, mainstream media. And now we have a book on the road. In the interview, we quickly terminated, or the performance of trade and I have booked. But I know that until the moment I came around, there is no guarantee that I will actually be on the show. Most golly is that if I have a place, it is usually by some porn show running on my porn as fun from this environment. Again, the Gail Gines, if you're not for her, you're a porn show or a cum dumpster. And, and then, there is this notion about capitalism. Ma'am, capitalism it did not depend on pornography for its profits. Yes, some capitalists will make money off of porn because, because it's very easy. Because people want to spend money watching other people have sex. Of course, people who don't have money can also watch other people have sex do other means. Say, free porn, do sharing of the files, or the way by parroting or stealing off of pay sites and passing them around. I mean, you don't have to actually buy porn to consume it. Right. So, and if that's the case, then how is capitalism, which is a system of profit and a system of wages, is a means of, or the primary means of porn? How is capitalism necessarily so dependent on porn for its ultimate profits. It's not. I mean, capitalism can make 
the most popular in a whole variety of ways, including, by the way, anti-porn. Being a porn to porn, and a clear goal that oh, the greatest anti-porn, the greatest anti-porn institution, namely organized religion. But then again, when you when your blind tunnel vision strikes, I mean, what can you do? Continue on, and of course, this is where Kyo okay, is so upset about that she is being stoned. Uh, I guess more likely the fact that that MHP is actually her that the producer basically contacted P. Melissa Harris Perry, who is probably more more aware of what Gail Dines actually is and of her act, and basically decided that she didn't want the the drama, want the drama, and cut and cut her loose. Which makes me like to have Perry, one of the smartest women people I know. <sighs> and by the way, you also notice that in the that there's a nice little blur or the link to her book with the course links. If you click on it, link directly to the Amazon.com page. Yeah, Gail is a socialist, but she sure knows how to use capitalist methods to sell her book in reality. Right. Let's continue on, though. Never one second did I think that it was happening with the MHP show. See, I'm a slow learner. As soon as I got the email that the segment was changing, I could smell a rat. I emailed back and acted the top making point with kept all together, or the producer had not for the segment. The response was gone and awkward, so I googled around to see if the segment of the upcoming show was lit anywhere, but found nothing. I assumed that I would have to wait till Saturday to see just how it had anything changed, but it turned out that people were smarter than I am at social media research were digging around to see exactly what was actually going on. Bingo! More likely, of course, is that Gail got so pissed off at not me, so that she sent some of her anti porn peeps around the internet to search and see what was going on, and then and then they reported back the results. And the next paragraph show basically what the results were. Excuse me, what? Hold on. Oh, excuse me. They came up on a post on Jocelyn Freeman's Freeman page saying that she was going to be on MHP with pornographer Clinton Tavino. Ter oh, oh, great. She put out. Oh, look at here. She. It, she. She misspelled Terramino name. Terramino. <laughs> right. I mean, come on, Gail. You're a professor. You're a freaking professor of at, at a major private institution. Do you understand the power of spell check? Terra Mino, not Terra Minio. Anyway, <laughs> continue. Now I have to start with the MID. Second, it's changing. Gone with a critical purpose analysis of the porn industry, and it is flanked with a fun discussion of women's sexual agency, their fantasies, and their empowered choices to make one. Any discussion of economic exploitation, predatory capitalism, violence, STDs, or rectal forces were cleared on the table. Yeah, rectal, yeah, never forget the rectal forces now. We were moving back to the rain Nevada with flop beaches. Even Seneca Reed was shocked. Dick was at the wrong. Image P, not some Google and talk show host. Yeah, really. Of course, the actual pigments that ended up being on the air turned out to become quite to be quite a discussion about porn in general and about Charlie in general. And of course, if Gail had the rather to actually listen to the actual transcript of the or listen to the actual segments, she would have gotten a lot of very critical analysis of porn. I mean, it's not as if Jacqueline Freeman is necessarily a fun feminist power. She is, well, she may be more moderate in her views than Dines, but she is very much a critic of porn. She is. And, and, and of course, and of course, we all know about Dines and dislike and this hate for Tristan Tamino, who have, he wanted not only the sex educator, you know, right, but a woman who also, it, has been one of the main pioneers in promoting safe sex, especially safe anal sex, and who also was one of the pioneers of the behind feminist porn, the, that porn that is featured toward women. But I guess it must, it must be probably the fact that she promotes safe sex porn that really the issue. 
who died. Oh well. Anyway, here's how she died reacts. And so I explained back then and emailed the producer, but this time I copied in a P. I wrote, quoting, since Dr. Harris Perry is an academic, you should be aware that the currency of our profession is open to me with people representing different positions. <laughs> you have chosen to do a segment that was drawn ready to tolerate at the offense of a world that will allow to the role of foreign culture. Selecting Jacqueline Freeman, who has not studied porn in any rigorous way, when Tristan Tarvino, who worked with the industry, and partnered with John Stagliano, a well-known producer of very much porn, undermined Dr. Melissa Harris Perry's integrity. <laughs> really? Really? <laughs> Wait a minute. Jacqueline Freeman was not put on this program, I assume, because of her recent study of porn. And besides that, if I remember right, the subject is not so much porn as it was the porn on the general issue of sexuality for women. Which, of course, comes perfectly into what Jacqueline Freeman territory. And, by the way, and also, you and Tristan Tavino is a very legitimate issue because she is one of the pioneers in feminist porn and a development on alternative need of porn. And, not to mention the fact that her films have actually sold pretty well, in spite of the recession that has hit the mainstream porn. So, I would have think that she was an issue. Now, now, if Gail Dines had actually been willing to go on the program and actually allow for an actual debate rather than simply hammering, you know, putting a hammer on the head and cranking back and forth drama with, you know, and, the, and, that not, and let's not really forget though that earlier with the, when, the, when there, was an, uh, there was an article on the Daily Beast about feminist porn awards, well, Act to contribute, and she contributed pretty much the deal. And then she turned around the comment section and basically blasted the the first the, the author Mark Kelly, who authored the post, as a shill and a quack because she didn't get it right. And of course, she also slashed Taramina with up evil dirty pornographer there, and a woman who worked with with John Stockliano and Ernest Green. And Ernest Green, by the way, is Nina Hartley's husband. And also a producer of BDSM porn, which probably well, this is the reason why Gail <laughs> cracked Ernest Green as quote a sadistic t -t -t torturer. <laughs> really, <laughs> really, maybe that's why she got stoned off of MHP because they did were not in the mood for drama. <laughs> anyway, let's continue on. My sense is that Dr. Harry Perry is not aware of the level of violence against women in porn, not the way that women in color are the most degraded and humiliated, as are black men. For example, one of the best selling porn series titled The White Male is called, Hey now, there's a Negro in my daughter, that wife, that sister, that mom. If she were, I thought that she would want a segment that renders invisible the lives of real women and men in the porn industry, if it repeat the feature of lives of a small group of privileged women. Mm-hmm. A small group of privileged women. Really. First of all, there, you know, the, the series did not, the, the Negro in My Daughter is not a series. It's a title of a specific movie. Now, there is a thing about a genre, a sub sub genre of interracial porn that does, that uses explicit appeals to the anxiety of white race toward black sex and. I mean, there is that type of, I mean, and it does sell a bit among, particularly among many whites who, who aren't that necessarily comfortable with interracial sex and, and who do plan to slap the bit of the stereotype types of black men and white women. And that's problematic, of course. And, but there is just as much IR interracial porn that is much more consensual, that is much more egalitarian, that is much more humanistic. Of course, you'll never hear that type of porn from Gail all the time because Gail is so obsessed with anal prolapses and pushing body sex and, and, and taking that extreme and extrapolating that at one extreme with the tender loving feminine sexuality on the other side. 
that she simply is unable to see the middle ground, the vast middle ground. I mean, when you all you can see is black and white, you cannot even see gray on the, any other color for that matter. This is the mental blindness of what Gail Dines attempts to feel here. Continue on. I also attach a link to my chapter races on Poland. Oh, let me stop here. Now, I will highly recommend to y'all, you know, if you want, Joy Nolan, or he follows now, Joy Nolan 42 has a long series where he thoroughly breaks down and demystifies the entirety of Pornland. I'm going to put in a link in the low bar for, for the series. And I think he had to, he had to break it down into chapter by chapter. I'm not sure that he had to have consolidate it into one fold or if he broke it down to many. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and give you the low, put the links in the low bar so that you can go ahead and. And he, he basically breaks down Gal Dine. And he breaks him down very good in a way that. Now, the only thing I would say is that my, my different, slight difference that I have with Jordan is that he uses, he does it from a libertarian right perspective. He does it from his particular personal hand view. I'm a little bit different. I tend to break down more from the libertarian left view more rather than a more conservative libertarian right. But either way, it's, I still recommend you see Jordan because he know, he's known about it. He, he's long, he's been a long time critic of Dines. And she, to demystify it, debunk a lot of her nonsense. Anyway, going back. Within the hour, I got an email asking, quote, Is there a thing that you would like to send me that we can clean our show, please? To which I replied, and I'm quoting here, you can't seriously think that a one minute I could offer a statement about the complexity of a global predatory industry that would in any way affect the like, effect given the direction you have taken this show. I find it a little strange that you ask for a statement from me, yet you give give a photographer that the Tristan Tarvino airtime. Now wait, now this time she gets the Tristan Tarvino name correct. Surprise! In the theory of the statement I refuse to make, they use my email as a statement without my permission. MHP read them aloud on the show, but not one of the guests on MHP engaged with the content. It did they went back to fun feminism, and the at time coherent conversation turned to the need for women to make porn as a way to cause the effect of the rock time being now in your industry. Meanwhile, of course, that one person of the show actually pointed out that the overwhelming market for porn is men, and that they are very happy to take you with their console. And that get, we get away from the fun, then let you mention the physical and sexual violence that women in porn endure, or heaven forbid, the level of male violence that women outside the porn industry have to wear with. Which is to die people directly blamed on and five product of the porn that they see, you know, the porn that they view, really. Of course, the fact that the overwhelming majority of porn that is viewed by men and women consists of three elements. One, women masturbating by themselves. Two, women having sex with their significant others, basically couples, basically their husbands or their boyfriends. Or ten. And three, women engaging in group sex with other women. Hardly what you call. Yeah, yeah, hardly what you call male gang and male violence. And most of it is mostly consensual. And most of it is most general vanilla. And most of it is generally, generally people engaging in, in in the typical foray of sex. Hardly what you call rape or violence. I don't know you think. Now, here is the way, of course now that Gail has basically eviscerated Gail for not getting away, now she goes on to really be trying. She says, if you can't get your way, you just attack the person. Just like she attacks the title of the neoliberal elitist, now she's going to go around and attack Melissa Harris Perry as a hypocrite. Hypocrite. By distorting an earlier episode. Uh, earlier topics that may be carried on. I 
Peter wants to walk in on any piece that would let me see how good you actually saw the movie The Help. I used the clip in my class in the race in the media because the passion and eloquence are so deeply felt. She is upset by the movie and she is all moved in tears that she has laid down the white with the images of African American women, denied the reality of their lives, and rendered them with the pain and suffering black domestic endured at the hand of white employers. In another interview, it has been said a real one that the help would become, quote, the historical memory because of the popularity and that people would see the movie would come to believe that really what happened, end quote. Okay, let's stop here. Now, the issue, of course, was the, the, the you know, called the help was basically an adaptation of a book that depicted the lives of, uh, of the Mexican servants in Jackson, Mississippi in, I believe, was the 19th, you know, 1963 really at the heart, near the heart of the civil rights movement, and was set off image B with the fact that they were depicted basically as, basically as something. Now, there was a, the big controversy of the, of the movie was the fact that the, the, the depiction of the maids as subservient and to, and to, and to, the, their, to their employers. So, because it really became, as what we became, the real, real wives of Jackson, Mississippi. It almost came due to the realm of reality TV shows, while at the same time, blacks were ignoring the fact that at that same time, black were being killed, were being slaughtered, were being lynched. It was basically a template for the template for whitewashing away the, the actual treatment of blacks and the actual situation that blacks were under in the South during that, that time. The, now others, I think, depicted it as if that they yeah, could have thought that view. And I, I think there are many other people who disagree with MHP's literal he, it said that it was basically that the focus was not so much on the treatment of blacks, but on the on the attitude of the white protagonist, the main character. I think the name was Skeeter with the and she was basically trying to simply to make a a, a, a fictional of a movie for the, for, for the for, excuse me for an audience. Well, and it went back and forth, and I think, and of course, MHP also got criticism from the usual ram of white conservatives who say that he was simply trying to fan the flame of racial resentment and fan the flame of racial distort, just to, and he was gently hating white people and all that nonsense. It, anyway, it was a this or it was a enlightening debate. The fact that Dine uses this as a way to smack or, and then compare the treatment of black maids to the treatment who did supposed treatment of black women in porn, it's it's it, it show it says all that you really need to say about Dine's and her and and her her intellectual capacity to bully people and her intellectual capacity to just twist anything around to fit her ideology. So let's continue on. I mean, let's read on. Clearly, MAP understands the power of the and is to shape the way people think. If this is true of movies, they talk to new other media giants and totally porn. If MAP is upset to help with such entertaining black women wives, there are more popular porn sites such as Bad Black Babes, Pimp the Black Teen, or Ghetto Gaggers, or here's the thousands of websites that show women enjoying, in quote, quotes, air quotes, sexual navigation at the hands of black and white men. These images just like the way the hell are part of the media world that creates ideas, attitudes, and beliefs that otherwise all women like the full equality, dignity, and justice. I didn't expect to be the only other guest to take this on. I did expect the political science to be more savvy and intellectually inquisitive about how individual and collective perceptions are cultural institutions. Uh, really? Uh, yeah, yeah, right. Let me wait. Oh, really? So, so Gail quotes three titles of some simply off the cuff, off the shelf of videos. I just think of the more quote, mean sounding title. Bad black babes, pimp my black teen, ghetto gaggers, really. I mean yes. And he makes them represent representative of, of every single display of black and Of course this is not, remember this is not the first time. I mean 
Now, I think about two weeks ago when Gail was highlighted, made a keynote speech at for the Stop Point Culture seminar. She used TikTok that we used Sharon Tarrant, who had all the profile the you of Racing Horn for Miss Magazine, and she had featured like four particular black horn stars. Marie Love, I think, Vanessa Blue, Cinnamon Love, I leave one. Well, I actually forget exactly which four orders to use. Well, she took those two orders and as part of her presentation, she took those four orders and then magically people to dismiss them by claiming that, well, they can't tell Cal because they are forced to do dirty, disgusting ways and and, and then she called them basically the the PR fresh for some what they, they described them taking take and revving it through the butt and and all the, yeah, the usual PR hyperbole that you just sell, yeah, sell these type of movies. With, with, while behind her, while she was talking, explicit shots of the four women in question were used to shock and all. It the the old basically shock and all that you, that you that you come to expect from anti-abortion extremists flashing pictures of dead fetuses on the ground to shock to shock people into anger people to blind people into you into mob mentality actions. Yeah. She see that that's how she works. And did no besides, why are these differences far more impressive upon me? Because she understand she understand the fact that the condition for media images is not just porn? Point not even the most dominant image for black people. The church, it's not even the, it's not even come close to even the most dominant social institution that shapes the mind of people. The church here. Ever heard of Black Church Gale? Ever heard of BET? Ever heard of T? Ever heard of Black Radio? Yeah, those institutions are far more likely to spread the mind of black people than porn ever did. Yeah, I don't see you attacking them, but promoting the attitude of women. But then again, who cares if you're a one-trick pony? Yes. Anyway, this is how she concludes her news. My only explanation for every piece laughs and jumping that she, like all media professionals, is held captive by the commercial imperative of corporate media. This segment was clearly meant to be the lighter part of the show, a little relief for the more depressing issues she normally covers. For example, racism, poverty, and inequality. I said these various issues don't create the conditions for women get treated in the sex industry in the first place. That way, to teach wonder and golden opportunity to the real journalism works. In this segment, MAP went from being an academic to a talk show host, and on the way, she compromised her integrity as a feminist. And that's how Gail ends this. I mean, there's so much, so much BS packed into this article, and so much. I mean, this instance. Now, racist, for one thing, the actual program, the people actually did touch upon racism in porn. And indeed, one of the guests in there, Michael Dyson, who was one of the panelists in that discussion, actually did touch very greatly upon the topic of racism in porn, particularly on the, on the performers. She touched on the fact that perform, male, black male performers were often paid less than the black female performers, or, and of course, black performers as a whole were paid less than whites. She touched upon the fact that many performers like Lexington Steele or Mr. Marcus were people were generally paid less than people. And of course, yeah, yeah, people that he often butchered Lexington Steele's name, calling him, you know, <laughs> Lexus Steele. That was kind of funny. He talked about the fact, about the fact that in the general world, the comparison between the the, the positive you know, of Kim Kardashian versus Janet Jackson, the fact that you, you the from even wardrobe malfunction during the '92 Super Bowl, you know, and comparing that to the popularity of Kim Kardashian as a sex symbol. Caramino, for her part, talked to me about the fact that the, the, the revolution of feminist porn and that porn for women was that it, but strangely enough, porn for women had actually been one of the few areas of porn that have survived the recession and would sell. And 
contrary to the major losses that were taking place in, ter in the broader phase of the porn industry because of the fact of both piracy and oversaturation that was hitting the mainstream industry pretty hard and would probably will hit it even more hard of course when the kind of mandate hits hits later this year I'm, I'm, and by the way, I'm feeling kind of surprised that they didn't cover the condom mandate, mandate and the recent efforts of the HIV friend and the V panics. But I guess they, they only had to do for like what, 250 or 250 minute segments. You can only do so much. To put it simply, I mean, they, it, what it turned out to be was not a f fluffy piece. It was. I mean, you, you hardly really do a do justice to the subject of porn and the subject of women's sexuality in 20 minutes. But for what it did, I, I have to think that I mean, she did a pretty decent job of it. And of course, the fact that she pissed off Gail Dye to the point that she, to near apoplexy, only makes me I mean, she, uh, she, that much better in my, in my eyes. And I'm not necessarily a fan of Melissa Perry because she is pretty much close to because of her. He sits sometimes. She tends to be a booster for Barack Obama and her Democrats. I'm a little too much for my taste, but I, if she does more like this, I can I'll forgive her for that. If she does more like the thing like this, anyways, I obviously I've I've done posting. And I did a post on my vlogs, and particularly when my Rick Art Club vlog, I have a post up now that did, that summarizes a lot of my point toward both the MHP or he show segments of one and the dive reaction. And, and as always, the link will be on the low bar for y'all to, it's for y'all to, <coughs> excuse me, the link will be on the low bar for y'all to, to click on and watch for yourselves. I also, you know, what I also recommend for you to do is just do a search on Gail and yourself, and then just watch the program and for yourself, and, and just tell for yourself whether it was really the fluffies that Gail did me, or whether it was a legitimate, serious attempt to. <coughs> To evolve the issues about, I think it's a it's a pretty much a start of a be a very real, a badly needed discussion and a badly needed debate about porn on the left. And I had to break the fact that because for so long I think the anti porn feminists and people like Gail Dines have had a monopoly on, and they've been able to bully out of existence anyone who attempted to, to deliver an offer. You remember now in 2005 when it happened when Shin Sun, one of Gail's associates, had it a, wrote an article in Counterpunch about how bad porn we went out know, And that moved Nina Hartley, who was probably one of the more icons and performers, to write, a, write her own response post. In, and I'll put a link to that on the low bar as well. Maybe if, if the Aggressive media and here on the left would start to listen to people like Nina Hartley more and Tristan Tarina more and talk. We, we would actually have a more general debate in a debate. But that would involve standing up to bullies like Gail Dines and thinly telling them, you do not represent us. And, we, and we're not going away. In other words, that old, pick, the old slogan still applies. Nothing without us. Nothing about us without us. <sighs> okay, I think that's enough for now. If I think about it some more later, I'll think later. In the meantime, thank you for putting up with me. I know, I mean, like I said, I'm not necessarily the best, and I'm trying, still trying to get used to doing this, things like this. So it's not going to be the the folks polished. But that takes a while, that's like. Thank y'all for watching and you yeah, have a good one.